Hi guys, this is Cliff Gray with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunts. So right now I'm just gonna go over some basic glassing strategy with you. I've got a whole long video uh, that goes over the actual equipment, a little bit of strategy, but this is really um, a video that's how I actually glass. I get this question a fair amount. Seems kind of odd, but um, it, uh, it, um, it's a question that gets asked a lot. And you know, one thing I'll say about glassing, I've noticed this whenever I've hunted with people that are even, even much more experienced than I am. Glassing and kind of hunting to some extent is somewhat an art. A lot of it is persistence and practice, right? And then it'll be a natural, a natural thing to you. Um, if you're, if any of you practice any martial arts, you'll kind of, you, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Like an instructor can tell you, you know, the guy will do this and then the guy will do that most likely or whatever. And then you won't really be able to execute that on, execute on that until you've practiced it and had tons of reps at it. And then you'll recognize what somebody you're sparring with or whatever is doing before um, it even happens, right? But that just takes time. So it's the same thing in hunting, right? Particularly glassing, I find, is that I can tell you how I do things, but you've got to do it over and over and over again, and you'll develop kind of your own style, but it'll also become ingrained in your brain. Okay, so the first kind of number one thing I tell people is that if you're standing, I'm not even going to stand up because it's, it's a ridiculous concept, but if you're standing or sitting and you glass like this all the time, just with your elbows out and you're holding the whole, the, you're bearing the whole weight and balance of the, of the uh, binoculars. Let me get my notes. Um, if you're doing this and you're holding them out here, this is, this is a poor way to glass, period, okay? So if you have chest binoculars and you're glassing, you should always, always create a frame with your elbows and your body and your knees, okay? One thing that is, that is a truth of glassing, and that's that 90 plus percent of the animals that you see are going to be because of movement, because of movement of the animal. That doesn't mean the animal's you know, trotting or walking or whatever. An animal will move its ear, it'll pick up a foot, it'll scrape into its bed with its foot or whatever, it'll flick its tail, those sort of things. You know, it, even more so than you, you'll admit, those are the things that actually catch your eye first. But you can't have a lot of movement in your binoculars like this. You can't hold them still enough to where that, that movement's gonna come through. If you create a frame with your knees, elbows, and you can hold these solid, you're gonna pick up that kind of movement 10 times what you would otherwise. So always do that. Like big binoculars, 12s, 15s, they really should be on a tripod. A spotter, you know, these big 85, 90 millimeter objective spotters need to be on a solid tripod, right? You have to have a solid base. But again, I'll go back to the ch just your normal chest binoculars that everybody has, right? Do not stand like this. This is idiotic, okay? Right? If you're, you know, if there's a deer, 100 yards off the road, sure, yeah, stand and do it. But if you really want to glass and find game, sit down, get a frame, and make things solid so you can control your movement and you can see movement. As long as you can control movement, you can see movement a lot easier in your optics. So keep that in mind. And there's lots of variations of that. Like I said, you can put on a tripod. You know, if, I'm, if I am standing high brush or something, you know, I'll have a large, like a long shooting stick and I'll do like this, stick it in the ground, and I'll glass off the top of it, okay? That makes a world of difference, right? You can get a real long one where you glass off the top of it, but experienced guys and guys that glass a lot, even in, even in terrain where they do need to be standing above the brush, they're always solid. Experienced guys in the mountains, for the most part, spend their time glassing from their sitting on their ass. That's generally the case. I mean, almost all, all experienced guys are going to get comfortable, create a frame, and find game this way by controlling their own movement in that vibration so they can see movement of game animals. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is that a lot of people want to grid right off the bat, just grid an area, particularly when they get a tripod and a good set of binoculars on that tripod. That's, that's fine, but I generally don't do that off the bat. 
I hit specific areas. Obviously, if you know the area, you're going to have a big advantage. You're going to go where you've seen game before and hit those spots first. But outside of known areas, I'll hit the edges, you know, aspen, between aspen and conifer, aspen and oak brush, oak brush and mountain mahogany. I'll hit all those edges. That's generally where you're going to find deer and elk more often. If they're feeding in particular, they're gonna a lot of times be at the edges of different types of vegetation. The other thing that I'll focus on, particularly if it's they're likely they're still bedded, I'll focus on shadows, the north facing slopes, and then I'll also <clears throat> focus on those areas that I know the wind is is swirling in. A lot of times game beds on those those areas you can go look at my ther the video i have on thermal and wind to kind of get an idea of what those what those areas look like and this kind of goes back to my kind of art slash martial art analogy and that's the sense that you'll do, you'll get where you know what a gamey area looks like and glass those first and glass them meticulously okay so the actual mechanics a lot of times what i do and this goes for when i'm grading or my first swaths of the high, high potential areas. What I, a lot of times I do is create my frame, my frame or I have it on a tripod or stick or whatever. And what I'll do is I'll glass an area that's high potential, slowly move and then I'll stop. And I'll stop for three, three or four second count. Then I'll move, then I'll stop. When I stop is usually when I see gain. So here again, this is a transition area. You can tell by the snow cover, but in there, there's also a different set of vegetation hitting, hitting, the, hitting uh, grass. Basically, that's an old burn. You got sagebrush hitting a burn, so I'm falling that edge, and that edge is gonna creep into aspens. I'll just move, and then I'll stop. Sometimes even lock the tripod in, I'll look with my eyes for a few seconds, and I'll move over a little bit further. Follow that edge. And I'll stop. In this case, when I stop, it's very clear there's elk bedded and feeding on the right side of my sight picture. So if you were down here in this in this kind of sight picture and you move over, you know, and then you stop. See, like you got all that movement, but then when you stop, very evident, right? You can obviously see the silhouettes of the elk, but you can also see those few elk that are moving moving around. So don't just keep moving. It's very hard to see game when you're moving. So a lot of times I'll be looking at a shoot, I'll be looking at the edge of that shoot, and then I'll stop. I'll move 50 yards down and then I'll stop. Move 20 yards and then I'll stop, right? So that's, that's, how, I, that's how I go as I'm looking at, at structure. So on the topic of gridding or just haphazardly going around, the first thing I do is once I've kind of looked at, you know, all my, all my little ridge lines and edges and shadows, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go back to those high potential areas and I'll do mini grids. So this, now I'll go into a little, you know, I've got, I've got a little edge here of aspen and timber and I'll move just maybe 10 feet and I'll stop. And also when I stop, a lot of times what I do is I stop either on the tripod or in my hands and I'll start to use the, the edges of my lens. So I almost kind of swirl my eyes around, kind of look around the lens as I stop, and I find that helps. So I'll just mini grid that edge. And it might only be like a 300 yard square. So after I've hit the high potential spots, done my mini grid on the better spots, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll follow topography. And, and a lot of times what you'll do is you can, you can get on a, you can go up, hit a ridge line, just follow that ridge line along and then stop every 100 yards on that ridge line and look, just don't move your binoculars, but move your eyes, look up and down the ridge line. Move down the ridge line and stop. What I'll do is like I'm looking at this ridge line, I'll move and then I'll stop. And here I'll just hold still. Here in the middle, I've got open, open brush, but I've got a cedar to the right. So with the corner of my eye to the right, I'm looking at the bottom of that cedar for a buck bedded or bull bedded, whatever. 
Then I'll move up the ridge line a little bit further. Up here. Up here, and then I'll stop. And you can see it's perfectly still. I can see the movement. You can even see that mirage in the background. After a few seconds, I'll move up the ridge further. Here. There's a little mountain mahogany in there. There's a mix of oak brush and sagebrush. Looks like a pretty good spot for a buck to just step out and feed. So I'll sit and look. I'll look to the cedars to the left. I'll look to the cedars to the right. I'll even look in that, in that background, see if there's something moving in the back of that mirage, just in case. And a lot of times on ridge line, I'm not looking for a whole, this is, goes for all the time, but a lot of times, particularly on the ridge line, you'll just see like an ear, an antler, something like that. You might see the arch of a back, you know, that roundness of an animal's back when it's bedded, it's, or even when it's up feeding, that's, it's not, that's not a common uh, shape just out there. And so a lot of times that'll pop out in what, in what you'll see. But along ridge lines, a lot of times you're just seeing partial parts of an animal. And the nice thing about falling ridge lines up and down is a lot of times they're, at the, they're, they're along edges of vegetation too. So you're kind of doing the, the same thing. Move on the ridge line and then I'm gonna stop. Use my eye, scan for movement, scan for shapes, curve of the back, heads, antlers, stuff like that, right? Move a little bit more and I'll stop. Glass during that stop. Okay. Following that ridge line. Like I said, that ridge line actually corresponds to a transition between oak brush and aspens. So here I've moved along the ridge line, stop. Look what I see. There's a bull right there. That bull, if you just move across, you couldn't see him. He's, he's kind of tricky because he's, his antlers almost look like trees and his back line's hidden into that ridge line, so you don't get that deal where a lot of times you have vertical uh, vegetation, and it's very clear there's game there because they have a horizontal back line. In this case, it's hard to see that because that bull's back line is almost on the ridge line exactly. That's what I'll do is I'll just work that ridge line up, stop, up, stop, up, stop, up, stop, up, stop. I'll do it quick and then I'll come down and just stop more and for longer, look. And the nice thing about working ridge lines is when game's moving, a lot of times you'll catch it when it pops up over the ridge line or it's moving on the other side of a ridge line. So there's really two things to remember and, and they relate to my whole glassing strategy. And that's that have a good base and a frame when you're holding your chest binoculars, big binoculars, holding a tripod, whatever, control the movement of your optic when you're glassing. And then as an actual tactic, do the same thing. As you're gritting or moving through country quick or whatever, move and then stop, okay? Hold your optic still and look. And then the over-compassing theory about that is if you can control the movement of your optic, you can see the movement of the game.